Okay, we've seen from Matthew 24 and Mark 13 and Judges 9 and uh, Jude verse uh, 12 and uh, Luke 3, we've seen from a number of places that God's Word calls individuals as well as nations trees. I want you to go with me to Matthew chapter 7 now. Matthew chapter 7. And again, I'm in the New American Standard Version. Matthew 7, and I'm going to pick up in verse 13. And I think you've been able to tell that uh, we're studying the Bible. Uh, I'm not preaching at you. Uh, we're studying God's Word. We're seeing what the Scriptures say. Uh, this probably could have been done in a lot less time, but one of the things that I've wanted to do and have practiced in most of my ministry years, which goes back to the 60s, um, I don't want to just preach to people and have you believe what I say, uh, even if it's right. Uh, I want you to see it because you see it. I like us to study, and I don't want you saying, well, Mike Dixon says, or my pastor says, or our church, or our denomination believes, you need to see for yourself what God says. I could tell you exactly where we're going, how we're going to end up here, but I want you to take this journey with me in God's Word and see for yourself. The Bible is its own best interpreter. All right, and it defines itself. We don't need anyone doing it for us. Now we're in Matthew chapter 7, and I'm going to begin in verse 13. Jesus speaking, Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and many there are that enter into it, or through it. For the gate is small, and the way is narrow. And that word narrow in the Greek, philebo, means tribulation, tri uh, yeah, tribulation or persecution. Uh, the way is narrow that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? We're talking about the fig tree and all the trees. So every good tree bears fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. Verse 18, a good tree cannot produce bad fruit nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them by their fruit. By the way, before I finish just the last verse or two here, Israel did not bear fruit. Jesus came unto his own, and his own received him not. They turned away from him. They didn't want to have anything to do with him. He didn't fit their idea of a coming king. They, he didn't fit their idea of a high priest. He didn't fit their idea of overthrowing the powers that be. Jesus came unto his own, and his own received him not. He was in the world, but the world didn't know him. They didn't recognize him for who he was. Israel did not and has not borne fruit as a nation, but then neither have any of the other nations, all the Gentile nations. And like John the Baptist said, the axe is already laid to the root of the trees. You'll know them by their fruit. Who do you know? The, I hear most of these prophecy teachers talking about, we know Israel because they can trace their lineage back to Father Abraham. And it was John the Baptist who said, no, 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 no. Don't say that we've got Abraham for our father. So let's take what God's word says. In verse 21, I'm in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And by the way, in the greatest part, that means believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. All of the commandments of God's word can be summed up in three things. Three sentences. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love others neighbors, relatives, friends, enemies, love people. And the third one we find in 1 John 3, I believe it's verse 13, believe God. That takes care of it all. 
love God, love people, and believe Him. Now, it's not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And by the way, you can't do anything righteous until you've been born again until you've trusted in Christ repentantly, trusted in Christ as only Lord and only Savior. You by faith must be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Anyone that hath not the Spirit of God is none of his. You must have been born again from above. So, what am I talking about? Every good tree that does not bear fruit is cut down. Israel did not bear fruit, but then neither did Neither has America, neither has any nation or people. The axe has been laid to the root of the tree. Now then, we need something miraculous, something, some work that only God himself could do. Go with me to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. I'll say this again. This kind of study isn't for everyone. You have to love God's word and want to stick in there and see things for yourself. I'm in Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. Jesus, again, these are Jesus' words. It's all God's word, but these are Jesus' words while he was in the flesh. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. Now, Jesus said in Luke 21, he also said in Mark 13 and Mark, uh, Matthew 24, when you see the fig tree bud, when you see it becoming fruitful, and in Luke, uh, Luke 21, 29, he said, in all the trees. So when you see a nation, whatever that nation is, whenever you see that, and it begins to blossom forth, then you'll know this is a time for growing. Well, when is summer? Well, let's hold on here just a little bit. Verse 34, I'm in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Jesus said, you brood of vipers. Remember John the Baptist saying that? You brood of vipers. How can you, being evil, speak what is good? For the mouth speaks out of, the heart, out of that which fills the heart. And as a nation, Israel, and as nations, all of the nations, had nothing good to speak about Jesus. Individuals did. A lot of Jewish people, I'm talking about Jewish in the flesh, they did, but they were the ones that God circumcised in heart and still does circumcise in heart and are truly born again. Go with me to Mark 11. Let's go to Mark, Matthew, Mark 11, verse 22. We'll pick up at verse 22. Mark 11, verse 22. Mark 11, verse 22. All right, I'm just about there. Mark 11, I'm going to begin at verse 22. Mark 11, verse 22. No, 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 I'm not going to do that. I want to start at Mark 11, verse 11. Let's go to Mark 11, 11. Uh, Jesus entered Jerusalem. Excuse me for that. Uh, I'm going to finish at verse 22, I think. Jesus entered Jerusalem and came into the temple, and after looking around at everything, he left for Bethany with the twelve, since it was already late. Verse 12. On the next day, when they left Bethany, he became hungry, seeing at a distance a fig tree in leaf. He went to see if perhaps he would find anything on it, and when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. And notice this, it says what Mark records here, for it was not the season for figs. Why would Jesus look for figs on a fig tree when it wasn't the season for fig trees? There's something more going on here than Jesus merely being hungry. Um, we were talking about the miraculous, needing uh, a miracle from God. The same thing here. For a fig tree to bear fruit at a time 
when uh, it's not even the time, takes a miracle. The fig tree was Israel. The fig tree was not fruitful. And, uh, all right, well, stick with me. He found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. But now you say, well, why doesn't he just wait and come back? Will he do that? Here's what verse 14 says. He said to it, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. Now, if Israel, like all of these prophecy teachers, many of your pastors teach that Israel is the fig tree, then what can this mean? But may no one ever eat fruit from you again, fig tree. You, Israel, as a natural people, a nation of Israel, and his disciples were listening. When they came to Jerusalem, he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were buying and selling it. And you know about that. And he said, not to make my house a house of, uh, my house shall be a house of prayer, but you've made it a, a den of robbers. And he speaks to that. Well, when evening comes, and this takes me down to verse 19, when evening came, they would go out of the city. Uh, and uh, as they were passing by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots up. Remember that from the roots up. Being reminded, Peter said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered. And then Jesus just answered with this, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Go with me to Luke 13. Luke 13. We're in Matthew, Mark. Now we're going to go to Luke 13 and we'll pick up in verse 6. Luke 13, verse 6. Luke 13, verse 6. Okay. Luke 13. We're going to be in Luke 13, verse 6. Um, and he began telling this parable. A man had a fig tree which, he, which had been planted in the vineyard. And he came looking for fruit on it, and he did not find any. And he said to the vineyard keeper, Behold, for three years I have come looking for fruit on the fig tree. Hmm. The fig tree is national Israel. We're, we're agreeing with that. Without finding any. Cut it down. Why does it even use up space on, on the ground? And he answered and said to him, Well, let it alone, sir, for this year too, until I dig around it and uh, put it in fertilizer. And if it bears fruit next year, fine. But if not, cut it down. Now, isn't it interesting that it had been growing, by the way, this fig tree had been growing for three years, Jesus's ministry, three years, three years plus, and give it one more. Well, let me ask you this. After Jesus died, did the nation Israel, after he was crucified, buried, and raised again bodily from the grave, um, did Israel begin to bear fruit? Well, not the nation Israel, as so many of our prophecy uh, friend, teachers of prophecy want us to uh, believe. No, it did not bear, and neither did any of the other nations. So, where does all of this take us? I want to finish up. I'm, I want to stop here. And we've got one more segment. And I want you to be going with me to Isaiah. And then we're going to go to Hebrews. And then we're going to come back to Isaiah. So meet me at Isaiah 55 in just a few moments. <music> 